Okay, hello all. Um, so today's first day of the Peter Parker um, actuator door lock thingy, I guess. Um, I don't know, bad way to describe it. But so first one of these appeared in the first um, Amazing Spider-Man, and it was kind of a brief shot that you saw where it was just a brief like, oh, flip the switch on the remote control, and you know, actuator slides the little deadbolt over. Um, and then in, you got a, we got a much better look at it in the uh, in the second movie, in the second Amazing Spider-Man. There was a, a lot of, or not a lot of, but in the scene, one of the funnier scenes in the movie. He's you can see it quite well. Um, and a dude on the RPF uh, built one that was very very close to screen accurate. And I so I looked at that thread and he gave a parts list and everything. So that's what I'm kind of attempting now. I'm gonna go for as high of screen accuracy as I possibly can, but my main focus is just going to be functionality. So, I got a couple of things in the uh, in the mail. I have all my parts on order right now. The first thing that came in are my servo wires and the, act the patio door lock, which I'm going to have to modify um, somewhat, which I will um, get to doing pretty quick here, which is nice why this, this came first, because you have to do separate things to this or whatever. So, I got that package then as well. I got, uh, um, I got these from Radio Shack. The LEDs, the green and the red LED for the little um, lights that come on and off when he when he uses that. He just got that from <laughs> got it from Radio Shack, and they send thank you cards apparently with their packages that don't actually say anything in there, just a stamp of that. So uh, shout out to Radio Shack for having great uh, customer service, I guess. Went by the hardware store and got these two aluminum plates for the back of it. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet, but. We'll see, because I didn't want to go out and buy like just a square of aluminum plating custom, because that's like these were like three dollars, so I don't really want to. So he also put the three D printed STL files, um, or the three D printer STL files on the thread for the RPF. Um, so I got those uh, STL files and utilized the three D printer at my school and printed these off. So this is the housing where the uh, LEDs will go, this is where the Arduino is going to go behind, as well as the battery assembly, and a lot of the wiring is going to be tucked under there as well. So it is going to be really, really close screen accuracy. And this is a little connecting arm that goes from the actuator to the actual deadbolt. Um, so yeah, it, it was good. I got to utilize my school's 3D printer, and I'm actually still the only one that knows how to use it. So, I mean, that's cool. I also, that prompted me to get my own 3D printer. So. Yeah, good time. Um, so obviously you need a 3D printer if you're going to attempt to replicate this. This isn't really going to be a how-to video, but it's just going to be more of me building it. Um, if people want a how-to video, maybe that'll be a different video or whatever, but as of now, I won't be doing really a tutorial-based thing. Okay, so, um, did a little bit of work, and I got it completely disassembled to the point where I want it. Um, so I don't need this. Yeah, these things, spring mechanism, arm mechanism, I already, I'm going to be modifying this. So this is what I want, and I'm going to file off this and this, and then try to cover it up, make it look nice. So I just have this portion here for it. Okay, so as you can see, I uh, got all these little tabs off, whatever. I think they're downstairs in the garage still. But, uh, yeah, so I have this nice and flat now. I'm still, I'm still going to file it and uh, probably repaint it. Okay, so... Um, while well, I'm kind of waiting on parts right now, so I'm just kind of to do as much as I possibly can before everything else comes back in. Because I really can't move forward with it until I get the actuator, which is, you know, obviously the, the last thing that's probably going to be coming in. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm... So this originally had this linkage arm on it, which fits in there. But I am replacing this with this 3D printed one. And it's a little bit too thick because the 3D printer that I used from the school before I got them. I, I'll, I might reprint this on my 3D printer, but I used the school's 3D printer to uh, to print this piece, and it's just it's just not very good. Um, so I'm kind of sanding it down to try to get it to fit in there nicely. nicely. Um, and then I'll probably just go over it, I'll go over it with a sharpie or something to make it black. I think it's silver in the movie, so I might paint this silver along with this. But at the moment, I don't have any um, silver spray paint. Maybe I do. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just sanding this down, and I'm going to put this on. So 
then one side of the actuator and all I have to do is put that on. So, yeah. Okay, so I went to the hardware store and I got a bolt lock washer and nut that perfectly fit. So, I mean, that looks really clean. I really like that. Um, yeah, it's just got a nice sleek look. Put a, it's even got a lock washer on there too. Fits perfectly, just perfect size. So, and it moves pretty freely, which is nice. It's not like super stuck on there. I say in that. I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna paint it with a sharpie, and then, yeah, and then it'll be ready for when the rest of the stuff comes in. So. Look at that. It's actually a really, really good color match. I mean, like, I know obviously it's black and black, but I thought it would be, like, matte and then, like, super gloss. Like, you can totally tell that I filled it in with a marker, but it actually looks pretty clean, so I'm happy with that. Okay, well, I guess today's my lucky day because the actuator just came in the mail, so, yeah, I'll be able to, this is pretty much the entirety of what I need. So I think I'll be able to start like prototyping stuff. So this will be so I, pretty much what I was waiting on was the actual. So yeah, I'm gonna open it up and go and plug it away. Okay, awesome. So I think I'm gonna start looking at rigging it up, hopefully getting it working with the Arduino. And uh, yeah, this is this part's gonna take some time. I guess I'm gonna have to write the code for the Arduino to actually you know, do this and whatever. And then also hook it up with the receiver for the key fob. So, yeah. Okay, so, uh, update on the actuator build. Um, I've been at this for about a week or so. Um, all my parts are in, which is good. Um, I've come into quite a few roadblocks, though. Um, so I'm going to do a pretty big update as of the last time that I filmed. Um, so, um, I, ha I just mounted the actuator with this and the linkage arm here. I did finally get the actuator to work. I had a lot of issues with it retracting and like going out but not retracting and then even more troubles trying to get it hooked up to the receiver and a, a bunch of programming issues and stuff like that. So I uh, consulted with one of my friend's uh, parents. He is a software designer and he kind of helped me out. And then I finally got it working, rigged up just a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, so I will show a little demo of that. Uh, it's not completely done yet. I still have to do the LEDs and stuff, but it's almost it's getting there So I figured I'd do an update. I just mounted this up. Um, I'll show you a video of it working with the servo Or not the servo with the uh, Arduino and then I'm gonna mount it up and uh, yeah hope All right, here we are. So, I have the key fob here. This is my um, 315 megahertz receiver. I have this all breadboarded up. Um, I'm not gonna go over it completely right now, and it is wired for the LEDs to work, but for some reason the code is not working. Um, I have yet to figure that out. I have to do some tinkering with it to get the LEDs to light up and then blink when this is actuating, or when, it's, when it has power. So, um, here, I'll plug it in, and I believe the code is already on the Arduino. It should be. Um, yeah, so, then we can see it move and stuff. Um, I have it set to when it powers on, it will to put the actuator at its unlocked position. Um, so once it boots up, it will just go straight to unlocked. So I plug it in with the 9 volt, and there it goes. Very nice. And then I have the key fob here. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it is. It, it works really nice. Yeah, so that's it. That's how it's working right now. And yeah, I have um, this little setup fits up. It fits really, really nicely. The nine volt with here because I mean it was 3D printed. It was custom measured and whatever. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this, mount this, the Arduino on the top, and I need to cut the breadboard in half, essentially, to be able to fit it in here. And then I'm going to feed the wires through right here and right here. 
and then it will pretty much be done. Um, the AR500 um, receiver is for aesthetic purposes only, just for like cinematic accuracy or whatever. Um, I wish I could have matched the wires better, but I just don't have the correct lengths and the correct colors. Um, which also is going to kind of pose a problem for knowing which wire is which, and I don't really want to make it, like, I don't want it to be super tedious when I put the wire through and be like, oh, where does this go? So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take, like, a Sharpie or something or label them in some way and then write down which which cord goes to which pin on here so I can just feed it through and, and put it in. So I'm going to start doing that, and then this build will be totally functional. Um, I did, the, I think the AR500 receiver that goes right here was like the first thing that I got, and I have no idea where it is. So that kind of worries me, because that was like 17 bucks, and that would kind of be a waste. I really hope that I didn't throw it away, though. Because it was in like this big package or whatever, and I remember just kind of tossing it aside, because I, it has nothing to do with the build until the end when you put it on there. So I really hope I find that, and if not, then I guess it'll just be a little bit late, and I'll put it on when I when I get another one. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get to it, I'm going to label some stuff, and yeah. Okay, so I have this all hooked up to my black box now, and I have the code um, programmed so that when power is supplied, it will automatically set the actuator to the open position, so it will slide over whether or not. So right when I plug it in, uh, so hopefully I, I put everything back together correctly, and uh, how we have a good first test. All right. All right, what do you know? Look at that. Perfect. All right, I'm super happy with that. All right, awesome. So I'm going to tie up these cables here and mount this, and then, yeah, it'll be done. All right, so that is pretty much a wrap. It works really well. Uh, works across the room through the through the wall, everything else. Um, I'm gonna try to find that AR500 just for screen accuracy. Um, but really, this this build was just more about functionality more than screen accuracy. I mean, obviously, wire colors aren't right, and actuators at a bit too acute of an angle, and blah 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 blah. Whatever. Um, you know, I mean, I I'm super happy with it. So, yeah, I'll show you it working one time. I need to mount this a little bit more stably, but yeah. Works really well. I'm really happy with it. So, I'm gonna mount it on the door, and uh, yeah, it'll be good. All right, hey there, guys. So, um, I realized I didn't really do a full wrap up uh, segment or anything, and I was editing my footage, and I realized that there really wasn't anything of it, like actually, like totally done on the door, everything like that. So, you may actually caught a glimpse of it already in the door. I also realized that my face was in none of the shots, so I figured, you know, this is this is my face. Okay. Um, so I'll show you it out on the door. Um, so as you can see, I did have to modify it because my door faces this way instead of that way, like it does in the movie. So I had to put I put the actuator on the bottom, and then also I did find the uh, Spectrum AR500 receiver, and it did it didn't come. It was just it was just late in the mail. So I got that on there. Actually, I need to re that but either way um so that's there that's just for aesthetic looks i just put a servo wire there it's not even going into anything so but it's on the door it works nice it works great super happy um and then also i so i got where are they so it operate it's operated by these key fobs here so i have the one on my actual lanyard and since it was super cheap off ate a fruit i ended up getting three so now uh it's actually really really handy um so you can see this here at my desk, and I put one of them under here. So if I'm sitting at my desk, I can just lock my door however I want. So, you know, sitting at my desk, whatever, just reach under the desk, hit the button, and it goes off. Very slick. So yeah, that's super great. Works like that. And I also have one over behind my desk. So if I'm laying in bed or whatever, I put one right here, so bam, lock the door, there it goes.
little bit of a delay, but I'm very happy with how it looks. So, works, it's on the door, everything. Um, I'm testing how long the battery will last, like having it on there all the time, because I was using an old 9 volt and it died overnight. So I put a new one on there and hopefully that'll last a little bit longer, but I guess we'll see. But other than that, um, yeah, I was, I had a lot of fun doing this build and yeah, I'll catch you guys later.